what's it like to work with a police dog? It's unique, very, very unique. You're working with an animal. You do a lot of training, but unfortunately in the training world, um, it's all very clinical. It's not easy. Um, it's very rewarding when things go right. However, it's quite frustrating. You do all the training, things don't go the way you expect them to. Um, because you're working with an animal, an animal can't talk to you. You've got to interpret what the animal is telling you. My name's Carl Mander, I'm a police officer. I've been a police officer for 21 and a bit years. For a police dog to be licensed, it's got to do the various tasks as tracking, so yeah, property searching, bar work, your agility, your obedience, and also things like wood searches. He's a big German Shepherd. He's a as I'm concerned, he's a wonderful dog. We'll go through the gears if you want him to. He does exactly what you ask. But however, he's, he hasn't got this fear of bite everybody. He's my first police dog. I took ownership of him last a year ago in October. We've been through training together, so we've been through a lot together already. Police dog! Show yourself! This way. got a really strong bond with your dog. To me, it's like a child, kind of, he's part of my family. Uh, a mama seen in Hanley Town Centre, branching a knife, um, making all sorts of strange movements. I get there, get my dog out straight away. <laughs> she looked to my left, the offender's there with a bottle in one hand and a knife in the other. So, immediately start challenging, uh, put the weapon down, put the weapon down. So, to me, it's a little threat towards the public, it's a little threat towards me. And it came to a line in the sand where I've got to let Audi now go and do his job. Audi's ran up to this bloke. He's trying to detain him. It's, it was Audi's first time away from me. Normally just train with one weapon or basically gift the dog an arm so the dog knows what to buy for. Audi's gone up, it's his first time off a lead, first time he's dealing with a violent offender. This bloke's got a bottle in one hand and a knife in the other. So Audi's come trying to go for him. This, this bloke, he's hit him with the bottle a couple of times, and then he's stabbed him with his right hand, uh, just behind his eye. Uh, Audi's like screamed, he's, and then it, he's, without me asking, he's come straight back at me. Uh, we've run 100 metres or so down to Pottery's Way. I'm conscious I've got me, that my dog is somewhere. I, I can remember sprinting after this offender, I've got my taser, and then I've seen Audi come back around again, and he's gone. For, for the offender again, uh, the blokes stabbed him again, but it's allowed me to draw close enough to tase him, so I've tased him. The offender's fallen into the road. Um, I'm conscious of, now well, where's my dog? Because I can't really recall what my dog's done or where he's gone. I'm mindful of the public as he's gone off to bite somebody. So I've got this bloke and he's tasered, uh, he's on the floor. And then I look down, Audi's by my right leg, he's just standing there barking. So prior to Fen's law coming in, um, police animals or police service animals, be it a horse or a dog, are classed as a uh, property. Um, so there would be no um, relation to causing suffering to the animal itself, it'd just be criminal damage. Whereas now, with Fen's law coming in, uh, it recognises the harm that you're causing to the animal. So it's now classed as uh, causing harm to a service animal. <coughs> Uh, my name's Dave Wardell and I'm a police dog handler. I've been a police officer for 17 years. I picked up Finn when he was nine months old. He's uh, just over ten and a half. So uh, we've been together for just under 10 years. Um, and it's been uh, quite, quite an adventure, those 10 years. It's been incredible. As we approach the alleyway, 
uh, we saw uh, a young chap run out, um, asked him to stop, um, and, and he did. He stopped in his tracks, he looked us up and down, and then he, he carried on running. I let Finn off of his lead, ran after him, grabbed him by the leg, and pulled him back down off the fence. And of course, I was then there right next to Finn. I was about to tell him what he needed to do for me to get Finn to let go of him so that I could successfully and hopefully peacefully arrest him um, when he thrust towards Finn's sort of front of his chest. Um, and I couldn't see what was going on at that, that time um, until he sort of relaxed his thrust and it was at that point that I could see uh, the largest knife I've ever seen on the street coming out of, 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 Finn's, of Finn's chest. At that point my life kind of stopped. Um, it's not what I expected to see. Finn had successfully arrested hundreds of people before. Uh, on occasions he'd had to, to um, we'd had to use force and Finn had had to bite people but we'd never faced that level of deadly violence. As he pulled the knife out of Finn's chest he then went to stab me because um, I was just above Finn. Finn then put himself in the way of that knife. He sort of lifted himself up to sort of deflect the thrust of the knife and, and take the power out of um, the attack as well. Uh, as a result Finn had the top of his head sliced open and I was only stabbed in the hand but um, considering he was aiming for my face and neck, I think I did, uh, I did pretty well. I laid Finn on the ground and, and had a look to see where his injuries were and I just had to follow the blood because he, he his belly was now covered in blood. Um, I lifted up his, uh, his left leg uh, and I could see the wound. Finn sort of uh, really broke my heart because he found the stab wound on my hand and he, in as much pain as he was in, and. Um, the fact that he was effectively dying in front of me, he started to tend to the stab wound on my hand. So I think that just shows you the, um, the level of loyalty and, and love that these dogs um, can show. After a couple of hours, we had to rush to uh, another vet um, because Finn had been stabbed through the lung. Um, so his, uh, his blood pressure level stabilized quite quickly, um, but his oxygen levels were plummeting. My heart was broken again because um, I was coming under a lot of pressure to go and have my stab wound uh, looked at and documented, which I wasn't interested in doing, but um, I had to. And so the vet said, uh, we'll, we'll give you the opportunity to go and say goodbye. And he did mean goodbye, because um, we didn't know what really what we were facing at that point. Yeah, so I went through and uh, gave Finn the biggest cuddle um, ever and, and uh, sort of cried into his into his fur and then had to be dragged away to, to the hospital. Um, yeah, the hardest, I think the hardest day of my life. So the second th part of the Finn's Law project is um, what we've nicknamed Finn's Law Part 2 and that uh, is to look to increase the sentencing for animal, all, all animal welfare cases in the UK. Uh, currently the maximum sentence you can get in the UK is six months, which is one of the lowest um, sentences available anywhere in the world. Um, initially we're looking to increase that to five years, um, and I, but I, I do think that's a start really for making sure that we look after um, service animals properly. I think initially the, those first four weeks with Finn were very, very difficult for me. I struggled to leave the house. Um, you know, I was worried that I was going to be attacked. All the things that your brain does to try and protect itself, um, really, um, you know, I, I really struggled. But Finn was fantastic, weren't you, Finn? Dogs are great at living in the moment um, and, and moving on from stuff, and I think we can learn a huge amount from the way dogs deal with, with, uh, with different things and incidents. You only have to go to rescue centres to see how Dogs are, you know, can go through some horrendous cruelty and neglect and actually become the most loving um, and forgiving uh, pets. Um, so I think it did change me. It's still, I'm still a different person to this day. Um, uh, I think it's been three years, three, three, and three, three years and a few weeks since it happened. Uh, and I'd say probably this year is the first time I've been, uh, um, you know, back to my old self.